Hello again, uh, Jesse here from Fall Off the Map. Um, I want to talk a, a bit about uh, Zika and Dengue. Um, so as many of you know, I just came back from a, a aid run to Kanoa, Ecuador, um, the, the coastal region of Ecuador. Uh, the Manabi province was hit by a 7.8 earthquake. And uh, because of the, uh, the building styles in the area, um, it was devastating. Um, in Kanoa, you know, about 90% of the people are homeless right now. Um, this is a El Nino year. In a normal year, uh, there's there's not a lot of disease. There's not a lot of mosquito-borne disease on the uh, the coast of Ecuador, but because it's an El Nino year, um, it's rainier, it's wetter and and warmer than normal. So that sets up the conditions to have uh, more dengue um, in this year, um, also Zika, and uh, the potential for malaria as well. Um, so. If there wasn't an earthquake, um, there, you know, there would be a chance that there'd be a little bit more um, disease than normal. Because the, the mosquitoes that spread Zika and its big brother, Dengue, um, are city mosquitoes. They're, they don't like rivers, they don't like streams. What they like is little bits of water in discarded water bottles, um, stagnant water in old tires, um, water that collects in garbage. And in this particular situation, the water that's collecting in all the, um, in all the destroyed buildings um, and water that's collecting in all the containers that all the people who are now camping, the people who are homeless, are uh, collecting and gathering in uh, whatever sort of container they can find. Um, you know, if you if you paid attention to what happened in Haiti after the earthquake there, there was a, a second disaster, and that was the cholera outbreak. There is about to be a second disaster in Ecuador, and that's uh, a Zika and dengue and possibly a malaria disaster. Um, so, you know, I, I'm making this video just to, to raise awareness. Um, hopefully... Uh, this will help coordinate with uh, aid groups um, or uh, people that research and uh, work on preventing disease prevention um, to try to cut this disaster off before it becomes um, something horrific. So, uh, you know, my experience on the aid run there, um, you know, I was responsible. I used DTAN. I, I used long clothing when possible. Um, and uh, I've got hundreds, maybe thousands of mosquito bites um, on my feet in just a, a little stripe where uh, my, you know, when I applied the detan, um, I stopped right at my, my shoes. And uh, there was just that little spot where the mosquitoes um, voraciously attacked. Um, there's a mosquito explosion already. Um, it has begun. Um, now is the time to, uh, to get it in check, to... Uh, begin the process of uh, mosquito eradication um, and educating the population um, because it's going to be a long time before all these people get indoors. So with with thousands, maybe tens of thousands of people living outside exposed to the mosquitoes with uh, you know an area that it, it already had the highest rate of Zika in Ecuador um, and you know where there's Zika, there's dengue, an area where there's that kind of those kind of conditions right on the equator. Um, if we don't make an effort to eradicate uh, the the mosquitoes and uh, educate the population, um, there will be a second disaster. Um, so that's what I got to say. Uh, I know this was a little bit of a long video for me. Um, but uh, please, you know, if you see this, share it. Um, hopefully it will get to the right people and uh, this can be uh, prevented because it is preventable. Thank you. Goodbye.